Antiel, the man, to put the final ball in the back of the net. But today, Lionel Messi overtook Lothar Mateus for the most World Cup appearances. He overtook Paolo Maldini today for the most World Cup minutes. He became the first man today ever to score in every single round of one World Cup. But Liam Brady, that would mean absolutely nothing to him had he not also claimed the Juvenet. No, he's going, to, he's going to get his hands on it. And I think everybody, apart from French people, will be so, so emotional, so pleased. Uh, he was absolutely magnificent in the game. It became a match within a match. Messi against Mbappe. They both produced. Um, I think uh, Ray said before the game, sometimes the goalkeeper can be the hero. Martinez made a great save with a few minutes to go in that extra time. Uh, but the cup's gone to the right place. Uh, uh, I'm so, so happy. It's funny, Richie, actually, uh, Liam said, except for in France, uh, Didier Deschamps suggested this week and said, he, in fact, he outright said it, that there are even people in France who wanted Lionel Messi to win this. I think if you're a football fan, like, you think of how many moments of joy, elation, this, this, this moments where the, the hairs in the, everywhere stand up watching him play, like of countless memories of watching him where, you know, the result of the game is finished. You know who's going to win. You, know who's you stay watching it because of what he can possibly do. And I've been in stadiums where you, every time he gets the ball, the place, just everyone's heart rate goes up. And for, for all the criticism he's taken over the years, the question about his relationship with the Argentinian supporters, his role in the Argentinian team, his legacy compared to Maradona and others that have gone before him, this now answers all of those. And he is now, we're watching scenes now, this is the highest moment of his sporting life. This is the one moment that has eluded him for so long and this is his last chance. So I think that's why Deschamps and why all of us are saying those kinds of things because it just feels like this is a just outcome. It feels like he deserves it. That if anyone, anyone, if the game of football is going to give you what you want, this fella is the one who deserves that. It doesn't always work out like this. No one, very few people get the fairy tale ending, but we're watching it now. But there has been this sea change even within Argentina. He wasn't really beloved for many, many years in his home country because he left so early, went off to Barcelona. They, they kind of didn't put him on the same platform as Diego Maradona, despite his longevity. Something changed within the last few years, whether it was the, the presence of Lionel Scaloni, the way he took the team, even as far back as 2019 in the Copa America. Apparently in the quarterfinal, it was the first time he'd ever sung the national anthem. And he's done so again every time since. Yeah, I don't think they've ever really seen him as one of their own, especially moving away so young and, yeah, singing a national anthem. Listen, last year, I think, was a big weight off his shoulders uh, from delivering on the pitch point of view, winning this the Copa America. Copa, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's just carried into, into this tournament. I think they're all glad and happy, and I think it's half the reason why we're seeing Messi with a real edge, being vocal, uh, singing, dancing after games. You never see him really showing any emotion at all. Um, and it's very apt, I think, today that you could say, I totally agree with Liam, it's probably the best final ever, with the best player ever in it, uh, lifting the trophy. Football romance, you could say, touching on before the game, it's absolutely not dead uh, with him winning today. The stars are aligned. Again, you'd have to say they've played five out of the seven games in this stadium. It's like a home ground, 40, 50 Argentinians. And absolutely, uh, they've deserved to win it. They have an edge. I could use more... Uh, not so pretty words to describe them, but an edge and just a willingness to die for each other, die for the cause. Argentina this is, and if you could bottle it, uh, Joanne, I tell you what, you'd make a lot of money because not many teams have it, and usually the teams that do have it are lifting trophies. And they've had to dig deep as well. Think back to the opening game, beaten by Saudi Arabia, and the reaction at home, the reaction internationally, the reaction everywhere to that. And all the players said going into the game two against Mexico, I think it was, were really, really anxious, too anxious, overly anxious, and they've managed just to deal with all of that to get to this point where they've just won the, the, the greatest final I've ever seen. There's a manicness to it, isn't there, Didi, to, to what Argentina do? I mean, you heard Damien there, and he, he was saying that if you have it, then you'll usually end up winning, but surely it's, it's, it's quite volatile. It could go either way. Have they just embraced it and got it the right way? No, they, I think they trust had a, had a mix in their team. They, they knew how to defend. Uncharacteristically, they, they uh, conceded two goals again. When they were winning by two goals, they probably should have put the game to bed earlier. 
But I think the first game just united the whole country and the whole team because and I said it at the time when they when they left for the game against Mexico, there was a distinct possibility that they come back to the hotel with the tournament being finished. And when you stand together and when you get through adversity, it gives you so much confidence and belief in each other. Um, and they wanted to do it for him, and I think they gave him the, the extra edge. I actually saw him about 10 years ago at Wembley when Barcelona played against Manchester United for the first time in the flesh, and I fell in love with him on the day. Um, and as a football fan, if you don't love this man, what he's done on the football pitch, you're probably not. And um, to see him lift the trophy, I wouldn't be surprised if he retires tonight. Uh, and we, we, we will never see him in a, in a shirt, and um, you know, if that's what he decides to do, uh, I, I think he deserves every bit of it because um, what he's done for the, for the game, because we need ambassadors, we need people who transfer values and who bring the, the game to other continents, to other countries and, and to the kids first and foremost. And what a role model, what an ambassador he's been for the, for the, for the game. Um, I'm just delighted, um, similar to Liam, I'm, I'm just delighted for him and it, I don't think he could have, without having ever met him, I don't think it could have happened to a nicer person. OK, we'll have more on that. It took him five World Cups, but Lionel Messi <laughs> does finally claim the big trophy that has eluded him all this time. Uh, today from the penalty spot, obviously, uh, Kylian Mbappe came down to that shootout. There were three crucial ones, two from a French point of view, and then obviously the winning one. There were. Look, when you're in a penalty shootout, you're in the terrain of there being heroes and villains. Here, the Martinez is the hero. It's well saved. Coman, there, it's not, it's not near enough to the corner. It's not high enough. It's a save that once the goalkeeper goes to the right side, he gets it. But this, there's just a villain here in this piece. Chumeni fails to hit the target. I think the, the pressure maybe of seeing his teammate miss immediately beforehand sometimes can add up the ante a little bit. The cost of failure and the, the, what's at stake becomes a little bit more into focus, but here Montiel knows he scores, they win, and he did. Brilliant, brilliant scenes. Damon, you obviously were, were there in 2002 when Ireland made their exit from uh, the World Cup on penalties against Spain. It, like it's, it's obviously such a difficult thing to deal with. Yeah, absolutely painful. Um, I think we missed two, did we? And I think they scored all of theirs, maybe. But yeah, listen, you wouldn't, you don't, uh, wouldn't wish it on anyone. What a way to lose a final. A brilliant final. Uh, we backed Martinez over Lloris and you just felt there was maybe too much youth on the side of the, the penalty takers for France and hence that's why Argentina come out on top. But you have to mention, I think, hats off to France in, in normal play. You know, styles make fights. They absolutely, and again, they shot making them changes. World Cup final, taking big hitters off, you'd say. Dembele and Giroud on, on 40 minutes. Griezmann on 60, 70 minutes and just putting four up top. The speed, Argentina could never really handle it. So what a, what a final they made. They played a big part and we're all talking Argentina, but France were top class. But on that, Didi, when France came back and got those two goals, and just to remind everybody, they were completely outplayed up until that point. Kylian Mbappe had been just put in his box yeah. up until he got those two goals inside a minute and a half. And you said when the second goal went in, if Argentina lose this, they will never recover from it again. So from their point of view, to come back in and then they lost another lead in extra time as well. What sort of mental power does that take? Yeah, I think the, the ascendancy was with, uh, with France going into the penalty issue that because they were losing 2-0, they probably shouldn't have even got into extra time or into penalties. And as Damien said, they, they showed a great character and I don't think they had a shot on target in the first on goal in the first 70 minutes. And it just goes to show that, you know, little moments and these players you know, if they if they get a stiff or if they if they feel the the, the opponent is vulnerable, um, then they then they bite and they, they hurt you. And uh, I think a lot was down to the complacency of, of Argentina for the first goal. Otamendi has to clear the ball. It's a simple clearance. He doesn't clear it. <coughs> then Turam gets away, gives a penalty away, and all of a sudden the the game changes um, on its head. But then to to score the third goal to get the equaliser again, to get that penalty against you and then have the, the mental toughness and strength to go into penalties and say we score one more than them um, was a huge effort from Argentina and, and as Damien rightly said, I think a lot of younger players in that France uh, lineup who had to take a penalty and these Argentinian guys, they're seasoned campaigners. They're rough as they come, 
and we've seen it in the in the game. Yeah, they. they I'm they just, sorry, all Argentinian viewers. Go on. Yeah, no, these guys, these guys, and they just nothing phases them. Nothing phases them. And, no yeah, and, 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 and whatever you throw at them, they deal with it. And um, you know, they must have thought going into the penalties. I know they're from experience. You think, oh my God, we shouldn't even be here. We should be sitting in the dressing room now, celebrating with the World Cup in the middle of it. But now, you know, we brought it they're, on ourselves. And, and to go through and, and score these penalties... They recovered the way they their composure in, in extra time, though, didn't they, Diddy? Yeah. You know, they gathered themselves again. And, and they were probably the better team in extra time. And uh, we did say, you know, the difference in the goalkeepers, I think that Damien pointed it out. And also uh, the youth that Damien's talked about. You said that uh, immediately. The moment it went to a shootout, you said it doesn't well, matter what happened saw, before. We saw it happen to England in the Euro final against Italy. You know, the younger players were designated as the ones to go on, and uh, sometimes they just don't handle the pressure. I think you need to mention as well, Joanne, Liam Brady here beside him has probably played a, a little or a big part in this final here. He's involved maybe in getting Martinez to Arsenal. Liam? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't involved. That was down to the you scouting. No. <laughs> <laughs> but Martin, Mar 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 Martinez uh, has gone from Rotherham on loan to winning a World Cup final. I don't know how many people have done that. And he's made, he's made a worldy save uh, at 3-3. Uh, and he got his team into the penalty shootout. So uh, I'm so pleased for him. He's a lovely kid and he's had to go all through, down through the leagues on loan and things. I didn't quite understand why we did sell him, actually, because I think he's, uh, he's an excellent goalkeeper. And there's talk maybe that Bayern Munich have him on the list to take. And it's a great story because he should give everybody great encouragement because when you want to have a professional career in, in any professional, in, in any sport, it's not always upwards. You know, there, there will be setbacks and, and you just have to keep believing in yourself, uh, keep doing your thing, you know, take advice on board from other people and, and keep believing. And, you know, I think this is a, is a great story for, for everybody who thinks at the age of 18, 19, 20, oh, I didn't cut it at this club. I had to go a, a step or two steps, uh, two steps down or two leagues down. If you believe in yourself, if you keep working out, anything is possible. And I think that uh, Martin has, um, you know, I wasn't aware of, of his uh, story, of, uh, of his history. It's a brilliant story. Well, will you tell us a little bit more about him? Because he was eight years at Arsenal and obviously he struggled to get into the first team. And he did many different loan moves. And, and I believe he changed his goalkeeping personality down through those years as well. Presumably the, the moves helping him. Yeah, I think that as a kid, he had to work hard on his weight. You know, I think he was prone to being overweight. So he had to get a grips with that. Uh, and then he, he waited a long time and he, he started to get his chance in, in cup games and things like that. And he began to play well. Uh, and I thought, uh, who is the German goalkeeper that's now at Fulham, did he? Leno. Yeah, they Leno. chose Leno in front of him. Mm. And I thought that was unfair. And then Arteta sold him to Aston Villa. And... Well, uh, we've got a decent goalkeeper in Ramsdale, but this, this lad is, is excellent, you know. And uh, he's playing at Aston Villa now, but he'll, he, like, this, this is, is his moment in the World Cup. He, he probably will, he, he probably just can't believe it. He's in tears, <laughs> isn't he? There's, there's loads of them in tears. And to do it, to do it the way he's done it, but to do it with Lionel Messi as your captain is, uh, well, it's a fairy tale. And, and to do it even, Richie, given that they had to come back from all of these knocks that they've taken from, as Diddy was saying, and a lot of the Argentinians have said, that defeat to Saudi Arabia was, was almost a game-changer from a World Cup journey point of view. I think they responded in the ideal way because not only did they come back and, and, and win their games, they, they won their group. So the Saudi Arabia defeat was just like an embarrassing result as opposed to a result of any consequence. It didn't interrupt their... Their, their pathway from the group at all. Um, but then, the, then to, to mentally stick together and, and, and the, the, their performance against Netherlands when, when they went to extra time and they, they composed themselves there having gone a bit ragged towards the end of the game. And I think they did the same here. They came through a difficult spell where it did look as if they were completely shell-shocked at, at, at we, all, we all were, in fairness, between what Mes, uh, Mbappe did in that 90-second spell. So... Um, that's been brilliant. Like every aspect of their play for that first 65, 70 minutes, you couldn't fault them at all. They're, they're deserve a champions. They we absolutely are. We saw the coach Scaloni there at the end. I, I mentioned it at half time that 
Diego Maradona said upon his appointment in 2018 that he couldn't even direct traffic. Nobody wanted to take the national team job because they had had so many struggles over the previous few years. You all thought he did a great job in the first half, but there are question marks over some of his uh, substitutions. Dara even mentioned in commentary, did he go a bit too defensive too soon? That's, listen, it's easy. Sat from here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, listen, you could argue the De Maria one, but we don't know what physical state we, he was in. He hasn't played, I think, since the Poland match. That's two, three weeks, possibly. But when he's playing so well and he looked like he wasn't injured, to take him off so early, you could argue, because Acuna would be more... He's played left wing back throughout the, the tournament and he, he's not going to give it an awful lot offensively. The other side of it, again, easy from here. Do you change to a back five? Because I just thought the front four of the French team were, were absolutely so dangerous. But, um, listen... He's a, a demigod, a living god now in Argentina. I actually played against him in uh, 1997, uh, Malaysia, the tournament where we, uh, we're still living off the back of it, um, <laughs> the 1997, and we played them in the semi-final, and it was all their coaching staff, so it was Scaloni, I think he played right back, got the better of me for sure, uh, Cambiasso, uh, Amar, who's his assistant, and obviously Walter Samuel. So I'll have to give a few of the lads a call, Tommy Morgan, Oko, and the likes, Dave Warrell, see what we can do. But absolute living legends. Um, you can question his decisions all day long, but he's got the job done. The Argentinians are going to uh, be there for quite some time at the Lucea Stadium, I would say. That is the image that we wanted to see, perhaps more blue and white than uh, black and gold. Was, was that a little uncomfortable watching there, uh, Richie? I had one mind I didn't think Infantino was going to let him go. Um, yeah, I, I, uncomfortably, I mean the the, the... I the the presentation. Yeah, look, it's 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 the scenes we wanted. It's the scenes those Argentinian players and all the supporters wanted. Um, maybe there's some cultural significance to what Messi has been asked to wear. I, I, I don't know, but um, I don't think they'll care. <laughs> I don't think anyone in that picture will take a blind bit of notice the fact that it seemed to drag on a little bit. It's uh, wonderful scenes that they, 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 they fully deserved as a group and him as an individual more than any. Yeah, Diddy said that um, Lionel Messi should have held on to the trophy. It all went back to the first half when Argentina were the dominant side and they scored what Liam Brady called the greatest goal in World Cup final history. I don't think you can argue, Joanne, yeah. Um... It's probably up there, you'd say, with 1970, Carlos Alberto, Brazil. Um, you know, I think it was the fourth goal, iconic. You still see it now on showreels, and this will be the same in 20, 30, 40 years to come. Di Maria, divides uh, opinion with a lot, an awful lot of people. Played for the biggest clubs around the world, Madrid, Juve, Man U, Paris. Uh, it was a masterstroke from the manager today, playing him on the left rather than the right, uh, because they needed DePaul to double up with... Uh, Molina on Mbappe, but yeah, just shows you transition, first pass forward, one, two touch play, it's everything you coach, it's everything you want from your team, absolutely outstanding goal, um, and credit to him, because like I said, he does get a bit of stick, but on the biggest stage of all, when his whole country, the pressure he's under, he goes and delivers Joanne, so absolutely outstanding and listen you can talk till the cows come home, yeah he could have stayed on longer, but he's affected the game, scored a goal and set up one. And we saw early on as well that Lionel Messi clearly enjoyed having Angel Di Maria there as well. A lot of talk about Messi, inevitably, as there would be. Bizarrely, heading into this World Cup, even though it was his fifth, he had never scored a knockout goal, just like Cristiano Ronaldo. Made his debut back in 2006, coming over on as a substitute against Serbia and Montenegro. Yeah, it's his fifth World Cup, and, and this was always used kind of oddly as a stick to beat him with. He hasn't yet won a World Cup at Argentina. He hasn't followed in that man's footsteps, and he hasn't given the kind of influential performances that get his team across the line. And I always thought there was an edge of un real unfairness about it, because whatever about Maradona did in 86, you can't win a World Cup on your own. You're reliant on a squad and a manager around you. He broke in in 06 as a teenager, and even then, like 06 is a long time ago, he was being spoken about as somebody who could potentially do what he did this afternoon. And in 2010, like, Maradona was the manager. Maradona is a lot of things, but he's not a manager, and they had absolutely no chance with him in the, in the managerial position to do well. And obviously, in 2014, they came so, so close. They got to the final um, and came as close as you can do without winning it. Um, but oddly, he got player of the tournament there. It just still eluded him. So I'm glad today, because there is some people coming into this game to talk, until he does this, he doesn't take his place. I don't know where exactly, I don't know in what pecking order, but there was something lacking from Messi 
until he won a World Cup and he's done it today, so he's been superb. That was the 2014 final, mm. almost last kick of the game. Exactly. Could have got something for Argentina. And, uh... and there were signs today that these were the scenes we were going to see again. Like that game ebbed and flowed today. It was, it, was, it was brilliant, it was memorable, it was superb. But there must have been moments today where Messi thought, and all his teammates and all the fans, here we go again. <laughs> I'm going to go up now and I'm going to receive a runners-up medal. Um, I think this was in 2018 where Argentina were a rabble. It didn't matter what he did in that tournament. It was chaos, if you remember. It was a real top-heavy team, load of front players, no balance. And then today. Yeah, and then today, yeah, all that pressure on him and he still managed to get the vital goals, he still managed to be involved from start to finish. And you were even saying, uh, Liam, because heading into this, even though we mentioned Griezmann and the influence he'd had on France throughout the tournament, all the big pressure on Messi and Mbappe, the pressure of the number 10. Yeah, and down through the years, like my first World Cup, my memories are this. Jeff Horst, hat-trick in the final, number 10, Pelé against Italy in the final. Uh, he was undoubtedly the greatest player in the world at that time. This was Kempes, led the Argentinian forward line in 78. Michel Platini, one of the great number 10s, never won it. Uh, went close, very, very close. Uh, this fella here, we talked about 86. And, uh, he had some good players with him, but he did win it on his own. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, we were wondering whether Messi would join these. With some of the great number 10s haven't done it. Roberto Baggio who missed a penalty in the penalty shootout in uh, 1994. Uh, Rivaldo, uh, he did it. And it just would have been a shame, a shame or not a shame, that's, uh, that's not the right word. It would have been a tragedy had Messi not joined these number 10s like Zidane. Uh, like Maradona. Um, you know, that's Sudan losing a World Cup final. Totti winning one. 2006 in Germany when mm. Germany were likely to win, did he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Neymar. That was a very is he, enthusiastic. Is he ever yeah, going to win it? Mm, probably not now. I think he's about to play another one. <laughs> Maybe this was his chance this year, but the Brazilians went out a uh, bit overconfident. Mbappe, he's already got one under his belt. He very nearly got another one today, back to back. And the World what Cup a final hat trick yeah, as well. What a player. He's the heir to the throne, isn't he? And what? this fella here, well, you know. Get in there. And I thought that was going to be the winner. That would have been probably more fitting than a penalty shootout. <laughs> <laughs> but he had to go through the enormous pressure of the penalty shootout, which he handled great. And as I say, you know, for him to join the great number 10s is justice. He wasn't the only one who handled the pressure mm. of the penalty shootout well. And in fact, if you were to pick a hero really from today's game, might it be the man we already spoke about with the, the one on his back? Yeah, you don't win the World Cup with, a, with an average goalkeeper. And this is a minute from time in extra time. What a save this of uh, Colo Moani. He's clean through, makes himself big. A uh, brilliant save. And if this goes in, uh, it's all over. And then uh, the first one goes in, and he actually got out of the three penalties, he got to two of Mbappe, got a hand to it. Um, but he made amends with the next one. Komani saves this one. Uh, then Chuamini obviously never hit the target, and that set them up for the uh, win. And, they already had a penalty shootout against Netherlands where they uh, came through, where he uh, made a couple of decent and uh, vital saves as well. Um, and I think they'll all, all thank him tonight because if it wasn't for him, there probably wouldn't even have been a, a penalty shootout after winning 2 0, after winning 3 2. And it, I think it might have broken a couple of these guys because if you lose a game like this in the end, when you're winning three times, you win by two goals and you're so close, um, you know, I think it would have haunted him for a long time. Fortunately for the Argentinians, it didn't, and they have this man to thank.